Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Inc. Studios. I'm your host, Inc., and today I need to put in a trigger warning before I start my quote-unquote story, if you will. Uh, today I'm going to be reading some poetry from, like, 2006-2007 era. Um, there's some suicidal talk stuff, there's some self-harm talk stuff, so if you're not comfortable hearing that, then click away, and I understand. Um, so yeah, today, instead of doing a story, I'm gonna go back and read some of my, like, super emo poetry from when I was a super emo kid, and all that fun jazz. Uh, it's not gonna be a fun experience for me, but I figured you guys might enjoy a look into the mind of a tortured 12-year-old me, so yeah. Let's do this, then. I'm gonna stop in between some of them and, like, give context, because some of this won't make any sense. Alright. The first poem is Happy Birthday Indeed. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. I wish I was better. Better for you. How old are you now? How old are you now? Not too old for a mother. I wish I knew how. Are you one? Are you two? Are you three? Are you four? I can tell you, you deserve so much more. That was for my little brother, who I felt personally responsible for, despite the fact that I was, you know, a little kid who didn't know what I was doing. We the nocturnal, the owl and me, creatures of night, just let us be. By the light of the moon and the light of the stars, we find our serenity, not behind bars. We are meant to be free, not caged behind glass, or locked in a classroom, unable to pass. So we the nocturnal, the owl and me, the creatures of night, wish you'd just let us be. Mirror Image Hey you in the mirror, with those fucking blue eyes, full of- eyes full of hate, hate like ice, and rage like fire. With that ugly scowl and that stupid haircut, I don't understand you. Hey, you in the mirror, you're a stranger to me, but you seem familiar. Where have I seen that face before? Hey, you in the mirror, don't look down. I see you crying, but I don't mind. And then you look at me with those fucking blue eyes, and I just can't accept you. Now it's my turn to cry, and I never want to look in the mirror again. I cut to bleed out everything that she had said to me, and as I wrap up all the wounds, I watch the stains spell her name. Even though I run, I can't escape my scars, and the bleeding will not end until I'm gone. Gone away from all her words and the dirty rags I used to mop up all the pain. My high is slowing down, my hands start to shake, and my coffee's gone. I feel angry again, and the sad is waking up from its nap in my pocket. I hate this. I want to cry, but I can't. They said crying is bad. Crying is for people who can't control, but I can. I pop in a happy pill. Sadness yawns. Anger fades to a dull, mellow yellow, because yellow is such a pretty color. For the record, context, I didn't, like, do drugs for fun as a kid, but my dad did have me, like, super heavily medicated, because I had issues, obviously. Anger will pulse through every vein, my thoughts are clouded by my pain. I cry, I scream, I curse, I shout, but there's only one way out. I dig my nails into my skin, so the hurt is out, not in. Blood will drip like crimson tears. I will scream, but no one hears. People come to me and say, you have to find a better way. So now the pain just stays inside. I want to cut, instead I hide. I go to my room and lock the door. I cannot take it anymore. I will not cut, instead I cry, wishing I could say goodbye. Life is long and painfully so, I just want to let it go. More pain will fill me every day, I know it will not go away. 
It finds a place inside my soul. It burrows and it makes a hole. One day when it meets the top, that's the day my time will stop. I'll die much younger than I should. I'd have stopped it if I could. I tried to make my time a little longer. I tried to be a little stronger. But they stopped me, so I'll die. Because it's not enough to cry. You want to help her, but don't know how. She needs you more than ever now. She withdraws inside a thick cocoon. She'll be gone forever soon. You hope to God you're not too late. You hurry on, you cannot wait. Le you lead yourself in circles to where you just departed, and as your time ticks away, you end up where you started. Her eyes are closed, she's deathly pale. A few more minutes, and you fail. You're desperate as you try to find something that was left behind, but even as you turn your butt back, her heartbeat stops, her world is black. It's cold aboard this ship at sea, with frozen glares and frenemies. The ghosts of glory float along, wailing words of a painful song. An icy splash, it hurts like hell, you loved it once, you'll never tell. The waters are unsteady, your boat's about to break. Your eyes snap open, and you realize you're awake. You pass him in the hallway, you feel your anger peak. You just wish that he would say he's sorry and he's weak. But he has no words to spare. You hate him and it isn't fair. You did no wrong. You don't deserve the lies he tells and oh the nerve. You will not bend. You will not break. You do this all for your own sake. She's so angry. You can tell she hates you more than ever now. You don't care. Maybe you do. But what are you supposed to do? You did your job. You did it well. You watch her hide beneath a shell. You try to talk. She says shove it. You're done trying and you think no more of it. I watch them fight, it's hard to stand. I do what's right, I stay on land. I hang my head, I know I've failed. It's far too late, this ship has sailed. And that was called the Friendship Ever Sailing, which was something that I wrote trying to get my friends to talk again after Brian and Tiffany just, you know, had this massive blow up and they actually never did become friends again after that. My little ray of sunshine turned out to be just like me, only stronger, because she gets beat every day. When I'm around, he can't do it. He can't get her, can't get me. But when I'm gone, I know my little soldier is fighting and losing. And when I see her again, she's bruised all over. My little soldier, my ray of sunshine, safe for another few days before the war continues. I wrote that for my sister about her psycho-abusive dad. Your mind is a camera. You take pictures of all the day's events, all of them. Your favorites are the ones of you and your friends, laughing, smiling, and then you come across the ones you wish you hadn't taken. Mom is sick smoking and drinking her life away. Her boyfriend is hurting your sister, and a faceless person is hurting you. And the person's only faceless because you forgot to turn on the flash. Oops, guess that picture is trash. You delete it from your memory card. In fact, erase them all. You can get the exact same ones tomorrow. Don't forget the flash. My friends are special, just for me. I'm schizophrenic, don't you see? The friends I have are always here, whispering things in my ear, telling me that it's okay, or that it's not, and what to say. Sometimes it's good, sometimes we fight, but that couldn't be my mind, right? They've made me cry, they've made me hurt, they've le left bloodstains on my shirt. My head can't do that, could it? Medication doesn't make them go away, should it? Is this bad? Am I okay? I'm schizophrenic, so they say. Two church-bound girls, two church-bound lovers, fight for their right to love. 
searching for acceptance and less ignorance, they pray to the God above, to accept them for who they are and fought not with disturbed crowds. They wait and wish for answered prayers, never speaking out loud. All right, that's all I got for you guys today. I'm sorry, I know that this is like a short video. I expected it to take a little bit longer to read all these off. Um, if you guys enjoyed this and want to see more of my cringy teenage poetry, uh, let me know and I'll see if I can dig any more up out of the depths of where all of this stuff comes from. Uh, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them down below. And I will see you guys in the next one.